Fox News, people are tuning out because you suck. Well, no, Nothing you say is honest. You can't keep pissing on people's forehead. Tell them it's not raining. <laughs> Tell them it is raining. I don't know the expression. I don't care. And that angered you. Tell them it's raining. Yeah. There you go. It's, it's peeing. It's on not him. raining. It's your piss, is my point. <laughs> I'm pissed now. <laughs> I love that this guy's the former chief strategist for the Romney presidential campaign. Now, look, I understand. Like, you win some, you lose some. That was a disaster. No, you just lose some. No, no, no. And this he just guy, lost. Yeah, this guy always loses some. I'm just saying with the presidential campaign, fine. You know, if you're the chief strategist, sometimes it's not you. It's the it's the guy that, you know, you're working for. It, it was you. He was doing very, very well until you got in his ear and said, hey, don't go after Barack Obama so much in the next debate because you just killed him. She's, and everybody loved it. She's begging. She's like, is there a tipping point? Is there a tipping point where all of this will finally stick? Nope. It just keeps, he's like Michael Myers. He just keeps coming. How do we stop this? You well, I don't know. It might help if we all stopped being such bitches. But uh, then again, I'm not uh, a political strategist anymore. <laughs> I tell you what, the black vote's going to have a huge, huge impact. Yeah. Especially in these cities yeah. that were like uh, like Fulton or like uh, Fulton yeah. County or Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. Detroit was a big was a big one. That well, was that's the odd thing about stuff. Detroit. You know, Detroit actually he was winning. Donald mm-hmm. Trump was winning yeah. Wayne uh-huh. County, by the way, by the same margin that he was actually uh, outperforming himself in other urban areas. Meaning, like if you go to Philadelphia, yep. meaning if you go to Portland, meaning if you go to Los Angeles. I shouldn't say winning, but he was receiving a huge portion of the vote in Wayne County with urban voters. By the way, in the same proportion that Donald Trump was receiving them in all other urban areas until there was. A vote switch at three in the morning when some red wagons came in and 99 percent of the votes were for biden just wow. this is one thing too when you're talking about and someone can bring this there from the uh from mission control we have this in one of our older episodes that may have been removed from youtube again here's what matters is you look at major cities across the country and donald trump was outperforming the polls and he was outperforming his previous performance meaning he was gaining ground like we saw with black voters like we yeah. saw with a lot of inner city voters except For cities, which cities? Places like Phoenix, places like Detroit, places like Atlanta. In other words, Portland overperformed, right? Seattle overperformed. Los Angeles, San Diego, Tampa, Miami, Chicago. Not saying he was winning it, but he was performing by a significantly higher margin. Some of these areas he was winning until in these key swing states, it's a statistical anomaly. Now, that could be the case. That's not necessarily proof. But we lived it. You can go back and watch the 12-hour yep. stream that night in election. We went to bed thinking, well, I guess Donald Trump wins Michigan. And yep. the reason why was because we were looking at how he won Wayne County, or sorry, we were looking at how he performed in Wayne County, comparing it with Kent County in Michigan, a place where I was living at that point in time during that first election. I said, well, look, based if we're just looking at this, this is the county that he has to worry about, and he's doing far better here yeah. and comparable in a lot of the counties that he won. So there's really no way. And we went to bed. One hour later, we had to start streaming again because the votes flipped. But hey, why would Americans think that their vote doesn't count, CNN. Mm. Oh, when yeah. will our lives start working? A lot of these people already feel marginalized, too. Then this happens? Yeah. By the president who told them, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Yeah. By the president who, when he was a senator, made a bunch of laws that put a bunch of black people in prison. By the vice president who did the putting in prison as a DA. You know what's changed with Donald Trump and black people? We're doing this black and white on the gray issues. We'll have another one coming out this week or later this week. They always used to think that the system was unjust. And by the way, the justice system is. It's screwed up. I'm going yeah. to tell you. This is not, we are not in a country right now where, where, where justice is often served, especially in the court of public opinion. But black Americans used to view it as white black, and Donald Trump opened their eyes to, it's, it's really about the corrupt and the people who they don't want to be involved. It's about the people yeah. pulling the strings. It's about the haves and the have-nots as far as power, not just money. And so now they've transitioned from the system is corrupt from, you know, against black people by white, but they're seeing the most, one of the most powerful white men in the world go through the same kind of yep. shit that their buddy did or their cousin who mm-hmm. was selling weed on the corner. And they go, maybe it's not a black white thing. Maybe we can link arms with other white people, Asian people who've been gamed by the system. Yeah. That's the kind of, those are the kinds of inroads that are being made. And that's why you can come back and t- I think that if Donald Trump is a nominee, he is going to receive a record number of black votes. Because, again, being around in comedy, we, we're, we have the luxury of being around, generally speaking, far more black people than most white people do, right? You're in a green room if you're doing a, a showcase set. It's like 40% black. Comedy has a lot of, and they're usually better than white comics. It's like boxing. If I have to pick one yeah. and I don't even know them, ah, the black guy's probably better. If it's comedy, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'll he's, say, he's I'll probably going to be better. As an audience, sorry, white people. As an audience, I prefer the black people. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're more fun. They, they t- take, a t- take a joke. They don't get offended. They write your jokes for you. Well, they just say it out loud. That's because I'm a hack. They're like, quack, quack. <laughs> hamburger! Ah, oh, come on, don't do hamburger like All that. Right. <laughs> I love hamburger. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so this brings us to the main segment today. Uh, and sorry, I went off on a little bit of a rant there. I just I, I, like I, it. I hate the media so much. Yes. Jacksonville, the shootings. We want to do a segment here uh, comparing Jacksonville to Nashville. Both tragedies. You can comment below. before. Pause it. Don't cheat it if you're not watching this live. What you think the contrasts are. Mm-hmm. Um, so to set this up, of course, a man killed three people. Uh, it's a tragedy of, of unbelievable proportions. It's always sad. Uh, Jacksonville yesterday. And just to be clear, we already know a lot. But for those of you who maybe haven't uh, been recapped, here you go. This afternoon, a little after 1 p.m., an individual we have not yet officially identified entered a Dollar Tree in the Newtown area of Jacksonville, outfitted with a tactical vest, armed with an AR-style rifle, and a handgun. Then the shooter killed three people before turning the gun on himself, taking his own life. Other than the three individuals killed and the shooter himself, there are no additional people who suffered gunshot wounds. We are not identifying the deceased victims at this time, but I can tell you that there are two male victims and one female victim. All of, all of the deceased victims are black. The Clay County Sheriff's Office, who has been assisting our agency with this investigation, received information after the shooting that the shooter had authored several manifestos, one to his parents, one to the media, and one to federal agents. Portions of these manifestos detailed the shooter's disgusting ideology of hate. Plainly put, this shooting was racially motivated, and he hated black people. He wanted to kill... This is in the first public statement. That's the one and only time I'll use that word. The weapons that the shooter used today are a Glock and an AR-15 style rifle. All right, so you guys can go and watch the whole clip. And by the way, all references are available at uh, lidarthcredit.com. And and again, uh, is the rule of law, or I guess I should also say are the ethical standards of media? Mm Mm-hmm. Because it's never been more applicable than this. How often have you heard them say, well, we don't want to we don't want to create copycats, so we're not even going to address the manifesto. Right there, the very first statement. So is the are the ethics of journalism applied equally? Well, let's compare this to the Nashville shooting from March. And we actually still don't know things uh, there that some would argue could be pivotal, yeah. uh, which brings us to this week's installment of Then and Now. Okay, so it happened last March, uh, so some of you may have forgotten, so let's kind of make sure that we refresh your memory. Let's go back to then. Uh, You have that there? Uh, uh, I'm I'm looking for the next clip. They Uh, uh, added that late and didn't tell me. Oh, Uh, do you have the clip? (laughs) No. (laughs) Nice. I I got to grab it real quick. Can someone grab it uh, really quickly or just... Then! (laughs) All right, we're going to try this as though we're not live. Okay. The Nashville shooting, which brings us back to then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to pump you. I got the clip. Okay. Uh, the shooter's motive, ideology, were completely obfuscated, if you remember, yeah. in the early reports. I've seen interviews with you where you say that you think the motive here was resentment. What do you mean by resentment? What does that mean? Resentment about what? So so the investigation is still ongoing into uh, this whole incident. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what uh, detectives have said so far is there there's possibly some resentment for having to go to that school. Uh, There's a connection uh, with that family Uh, right now. I can't go deeply into that, uh, but because it's unconfirmed. Yeah, here's the very clear answer, which, by the way, we were able to confirm, um, and we're not, we don't even have an investigative unit. This was someone who was a radical gender ideologist who was targeting specifically what they viewed as a Christian school and Christian victims. Mm-hmm. Should be a pretty damn clear answer. And you had a manifesto yeah. that laid all of that out. Yes, mm-hmm. which we have never had access Still to, Still don't, right? Still? Right. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't it a woman festo? Well, it was a Z-Festo. Ah. It was a your guess is as good Gosh, as mine. More of a Fisto. Depending on a, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's my favorite comedian from the Vaudeville days. Yes. Old Fisto. <laughs> <laughs> Fisto the Clown. <laughs> so, Fisto. And the blame was then back in the media, immediately deflected towards what? Towards what? Trans hate, uh, right? So here's NBC uh, on March 28th. 
Fear pervades Tennessee's trans community amid focus on Nashville shooters' gender identity. I don't know. Fear should maybe uh, permeate the community from crazy transgender shooters, considering that that's what that's just true. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sky News on the 29th uh, that year. <laughs> trans community fears backlash after attack by Audrey Hale. Yeah, they fear someone going, hey, 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 you tra- you, you, you tra- tranny, stop shooting people. He said it again. You stop, stop it. Yeah, of course. Them, I know why they hid the manifesto. Yeah, because the first line was the same line they said when they came in the building, and it was "Bye bye, binary." Yes, exactly. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. Saying it, I was going in "Bye bye, binary." You got an I advanced shop copy. At yeah. Target now. It was Audrey Hale for those of you who've forgotten. And by the way, we would have to go around. Uh, we'd have to avoid on YouTube covering anything from the manifesto or from this person's social media or by the way people would be suspended on social media in case you don't remember for misgendering the mass shooter mm-hmm. here's overlay d5 in case you forgot it was audrey hale used he him pronouns she and, did huh yeah she did i don't care not fooling anybody youtube dump button for, <laughs> whoever's hitting the youtube dump button today their fingers <laughs> sore yeah just keep it's it. like morse code <laughs> <laughs> it's like that benedict cumberpatch film <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to now with Jacksonville. Within 24 hours, we know almost everything there is to know about the shooter, including romantic preferences and favorite meals. Aaron. Early 20s. Early 20s, white suspect? White male. No, he targeted a certain group of people, and that's black people. That's what he, that's what he said he wanted to kill. And um, that's very clear. Just to be clear, it is Equally disgusting to me for an individual to shoot black people because they are black. As it is for a crazy transgender individual to shoot Christians because they believe in biology. And by the way, the FBI, good old FBI, when yeah. they're not too busy looking at pornography, child pornography, child pornography clarify, yes, on their course. laptops, <laughs> uh, they've already opened up a federal civil rights investigation into a hate crime. I wonder, uh, I hope they have the Southern Poverty Law Center. They do. Yeah, doing zilch with them. We have opened a federal civil rights investigation, and we will pursue this incident as a hate crime. Hate crimes are always and will always remain a top priority for the FBI because they are not only attack on a victim, they are also meant to threaten and intimidate an entire community. Well, that's not hate crime. That's terrorism. What were you about to say there, Gerald? The guy's dead. Yeah, that's <laughs> what are they investigating? Yeah. Who are... What in the hell are you doing? Are they investigating what, <laughs> I don't, what balloons for the celebration party? I, am I yeah, if that was something? my family that was shot in a Dollar General, I wouldn't be worried about what kind of crime it's being classified Yes, you as. shot yeah. I'd be worried that it murder. Might, my brother and my sister's dead. That's yes, what exactly. I'd be worried about. Ah, thank you, FBI, for coming in and, and doing this as a hate crime. The, uh, the, the perp is over there with half his head gone. He should have done that before he went into the Dollar General, but hey, didn't happen. What are you going to do? Yeah, isn't your job to, like, aren't you supposed to help prevent criminals from shooting people, not after? Afterwards, go. Oh, that guy's dead. Cuff him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> cuff him. <laughs> God, wait, what purpose do you serve? Yeah. <laughs> no zip ties for this guy. He's yeah. getting the real yeah, yeah, metal yeah, yeah, cuffs. Yeah, real metal cuffs. <laughs> mm-hmm. The mainstream headlines: less than 24 hours after the shooting, multiple people killed. This is from ABC in racially motivated shooting at Dollar General in Florida. This is from the Atlantic. The Jacksonville killer wanted everyone to know his message of hate. Hey, this is all true, by the way. Same thing with the transgender true. shooter in Nashville. Yep. Sheriff provides the first details of how a white man fatally shot three black people at a Florida store. And that headline, by the way, from AP was then changed to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis booed at vigil as hundreds <laughs> mourn more racist killers. Oh, uh, they were just trying to fit racist and Governor DeSantis into the same headline. Yeah. Think and about the it. Someone mourn. sat there and said, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to headline here is going uh-huh. to be uh, Sheriff provides the first details okay. of how a white man fatally shot three black people at a Florida store. Wow, that's great. Then his boss, as Jameson, came in and said, that title sucks. He's like, oh, I got better. Uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis uh-huh. Uh-huh. booed at vigil as hundreds yeah. more and more racist killings. Love that's it. That's good for our country, right? Then, hey, next, we'll do a segment bitching about division and how algorithms on social media push people to radical ideologies. <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> that's an inner monologue that's good <laughs> comment below if you see the inconsistency they want you to believe that our response is what's dividing america and unlike ap hey guess what we make all the references available i highly encourage that you go and watch that you go and read them by the way watch this show and then tune out 
tune out. You don't need to be scrolling on social media every single day. This is the yeah. problem with algorithm culture. So this brings us back to then with Nashville, the manifesto was not released. Oh. oh. Right? The Nashville parents specifically requested not to release the manifesto. Oh, hold on. Why do we give a damn what they requested? Were these the parents of the victims or the parents well, of the shooter? It's the parents of Can the victims. Can someone clarify? I, I want to make sure they have this, this right. It says there's no compelling state interest in giving voice to a horrendous criminal. The parents' attorney wrote in these documents. Parents victims. of the victims. Probably parents, parents of, the victims. of the victims. Now, I now listen, I, I care about what they say, but I'm sorry it does. It does. I'm sorry it does matter to us. We need to understand this because right now what you're seeing is white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. And this guy was a white supremacist by every account that we have, and that should be absolutely be abhorrent to anybody. Person. This Jacksonville right person. Right now we're talking right? about Nashville. But back in Nashville, both we need to know what the motivation was. Yeah, well, absolutely. we know. The media doesn't. Exactly. The media acts as though they don't. And by the way, both the left and the right-wing media... They were claiming, and here's the thing too, just to be clear, I get that I'm a hypocrite. I understand because I used to say, you know what, I don't want these issues to be politicized. Guess what? That's not me anymore. It's not me anymore. Before the bodies even assume, it's not, it's not a luxury that we have. Right. Do, you, do you guys you guys feel the same way? You can comment below. Hit like if you think it's important to just push back right away, fight like hell immediately. <laughs> I used to say, let's wait. And we should wait for the facts. Yeah. But I'm not going to wait and allow them to use the graves of children or adults in order to try and push an agenda. It's, it's, it's no longer an option. They want you to think that everyone in this room is responsible for the division in America. No, it's them. What they want to do is divide America and have no response. And we're not going to play that game anymore. Back then with Nashville, both the left and the right-wing media, they were claiming that releasing the manifesto or even talking about it, you know, even mentioning his name, would spur copycat killers. This manifesto Let's other people read it and then somehow copycats become involved. And the main thing you were talking about is this called mass shooting contagion. And it's when the releases of manifestos then contribute to the other manifestos. Some people even copy and paste the manifestos into it. And it's again, it's a copycat. You get people who are doing copycat uh, things. They see all the attention these things get in the media and they're mentally unbalanced and, and uh, they, they go about this business. Possible motive.